Friends, welcome to the 19th lecture on module 2 on HSC practices in offshore engineering. We are talking about the 19th lecture. We will discuss in this lecture accidents in offshore platform and see how hazard analysis can be linked to this. So, these are lectures on module 2 where we are talking about operational safety and the courses on HSC practices in offshore and petroleum engineering. To start with, we will take the first case study which is slight near platform in North Sea. <coughs> It is a con deep type platform, concrete deep water platform. It is having a concrete base. So, one can say the structure is very massive and the loads encountered by self weight of the platform that is the primary characteristic of the platform because it is a gravity based structure. It consists of about four, 24 cells because they are all caisson type. Total base area of about 16,000 square meter. It is operating at a depth of 82 meter water depth. relatively shallow waters. The platform has faced or encountered a seismic event. The failure of the platform resulted in or let us say caused in a seismic event equivalent to to 3.0 magnitude on the Richter scale. Now, interestingly, the economic loss of the failure, which we are more keen in risk analysis is, is about US dollar 700 million that is the estimated loss of this failure. Friends look at the screen now, it is actually a captured view indicated graphically about the Sleipner A platform in North Sea. The right side is actually the platform what you see, and the left side is actually the scenario where the platform was about to be attempted for rescue operations. Now, let us see the reasons for failure, what happened to them, the diagnosis. Interestingly, we all know it is a cell cellular or caisson based design essentially the system is concrete in material concrete has high durability in fact it can it has better characteristics than steel in terms of corrosion resistance however there has been a failure noticed in the cell wall of the caisson. This resulted in crack propagation. So, the origin of failure is from a crack started from the cell wall. This resulted in leakage of the stored oil. So, interestingly people tried to use pumps which could not actually control the leakage. The basic reason for structural failure was assessed 
due to insufficient anchorage so that is one reason anchorage of reinforcement in critical zones you know anchorage is a very important check to be done for reinforced concrete design especially in critical zones where the bending bars are overlapped it is also seen that is first reason the second reason was the shear stresses were underestimated in the design it is very serious to know that the underestimate was about 47% low so it's phenomenally a big oversight in the design okay the third reason was the concrete walls used for the kaizen cells were reported to have inadequate thickness so if you look at the diagnosis or look at the conclusion summary of this particular failure let's say the summary what we learned from this kind of accident essentially the failure is a structural failure so it is better that design must have been checked rigorously which was not done in this case the second reason could be even choice of material in fact for reinforcing bars and let's say layout of rebars could also be another reason where we have to diagnose so this is an avoidable failure okay the failure would have been avoided so i would associate this to human error instead of saying error we can even say oversight so even though you do lot of check during the preliminary design stages however there can be some oversight which can lead to this kind of problems so this is a classical example where a structural design failure can cause a serious economic loss to the platform the second example what we will discuss the second example is thunder horse platform thunder horse platform is a production platform located in mississippi canyon block southeast of new orleans the construction cost of this platform because to know the economic perspective it is interesting that we should know the investment also the construction cost is approximately about us dollars 5 billion the service life of the platform estimated originally is close to about 25 years the hull of the platform was constructed in 2004 that is a period of construction and interestingly if you look at in 2005 the platform was subjected to hurricane dennis
So, the platform was evacuated. <coughs> no fatal reports on any personnel on platform, they were all safe. After the hurricane passed, the platform was inspected and assessment reports did not mention any damage. So, no damage after passage of hurricane So, friends, here is an example which contradicts the whole idea that the design failure is very common. So, it is a very uncommon phenomena which happened in the earlier failure case what we discussed. So, in this case even though a hurricane of a very high intensity or magnitude passed the platform, there were no fatal reports, the platform was evacuated successfully and the platform had no structural damage even after passage of the hurricane. The hull of the platform was perfectly integral. Interestingly, the issue was very critical here. An incorrect plumbing line allowed water to flow freely which actually tipped off the platform. So, it is very important here that hazard analysis on the design and functional aspects is important because a minor detail such like plumbing and pipeline can also cause a damage to the platform even though the platform sustained an hurricane of a very high magnitude. You see that interesting part is a small component or a very minor mistake in the whole layout could tip off the platform. However, the platform sustained a very huge magnitude of hurricane denis without any structural damage. So, Hazard analysis or hazard evaluation or system requirements in a given design of offshore structures where even minor details must be looked into so that nothing is oversight, nothing is left over unnoticed so that all factors put together should be checked for all possible perceived deviations in the whole function of the platform or the design because the design failure which was responsible for the first case of case study of accident is not there in the second case study, but a very minor mistake made by the pipeline plumbing has caused the tipping of the platform. However, interestingly the platform was then rehabilitated. Subsequently after about a month of the hurricane Dennis. it was repaired and subsequently hurricane Katrina passed the platform and the platform did not cause any damage. And no structural damage was reported. So, all the time one cannot say that the design office could have an oversight in the detailing of reinforcement, checking of shear, checking of anchorage rebars, detailing of uh, structural layout of bars etcetera all the time does not happen, but as a rare case in the first case study what we just now saw there was a design fault or a oversight which costed the platform about 700 billion US dollars. However, the structural design can be as integral as it is which has passed two hurricanes, hurricane Dennis and hurricane Katrina successfully without any structural damage, but a small mistake like plumbing pipeline could cause the tipping of the platform as you can see in this photograph. I request you to look at the screen now, there is a over topping of Thunder Earth platform shown graphically here. This is what actually happened to the platform schematically. The platform was over toppled because of the allowance of water flowing freely 
from a plumbing pipeline. However, the structural integrity was wonderful for the platform, which withstood two hurricanes, Hurricane Dennis and Hurricane Katrina successfully even after rehabilitation. The third case study what we will see now is Timo Seerig, which is an oil rig. Timo Seerig actually caught fire. happened on 2nd November 2009, resulted in excessive oil spill, caused severe environmental damage. No personal injury, during the accident they were all safe, but the main reason for the fire accident interestingly friends was not known. So, if you look at the screen now, interestingly you can see the graphical image captured of the timer C oil rig, which is showing the fumes being escaped from the top side of the platform, which is indicative way of the fire explosion, which happened in the oil rig in on 2009. Fourth case study. is the Bombay High North in offshore Mumbai. Located in Mumbai, India. The platform had fire accident reported on July 27th. 2005. Interestingly, the Bombay High North, which we call as BHN, BHN was completely gutted to molten metal in less than 2 hours. Very interestingly, the whole infrastructure was completely reduced to molten metal. Of course, the platform was later repaired and retrofitted. And made functional that is a different story, but however, there was a fire accident which could even catastrophically damage the whole platform which was very effectively functional in India. Friends, if you look at the screen, you will see the damaged view of the BHN platform which is gutted because a fire accident happened on 2005 July 27. So, what do we learn from these events? It is very important and common. to note that the reason for accident in most of the cases is not known. So, which leaves an idea that oil production exploration and processing is a hazardous process cannot be risk free. Accidents are 
unexpected so risk because the economic value is associated is very high second reason could be even the post accident studies which has been conducted on these and reported in the literature for example pre metal 2010 shows that there are set of complex reasons for these accidents. In engineering perspective, if you try to diagnose these accidents, one can easily understand that the costs are mostly due to oversight. The oversight was either in the design or during operation, which resulted in serious accidents. Therefore, identifying the deviations which are perceived. from the design intent in any working plant is important. So, hazard which is giving me the hazard identification, hazard which gives me hazards during operation of the plant, what if checklist will be helpful. to correct the mistakes in the design before these design mistakes become very expensive as in the cases we reported. Subsequently, sufficient training towards safety operations could always save the platform or save the oil business by a large amount. So, HTC practices are very important and becomes mandatory really to learn as a very thorough tool from such accidents. So, of course, as summarized by Valeri and Carey in 1991, HSC practices and hazard and azab studies are very useful in revisiting either the design problems or the problems during operation in any process plant or any structural problems like this, which could save lot of damages from happening. So, that is important therefore, hazard evaluation risk analysis are vital as far as offshore industry is concerned, which is repeatedly proven by cash studies as we just now discussed during accidents. Therefore, one can say risk analysis is very vital. because we do not want such events to be repeated. So, risk analysis tools should be handled very carefully to have a successful outcome as told by Terje and Janeric in 2007. 
also QRA tools both qualitative and quantitative to be very specific Hazab tools are very useful and applicable to offshore and petroleum engineering industry. Now the question is once we agree that risk analysis is important and very vital tool, let us see at what stages one can do risk analysis. Risk analysis can be carried out at different stages. The first and foremost stage where people should do risk analysis, it can be done at the front end engineering design stage itself, what we call as feed front end engineering design stage itself. One can also do risk analysis during fabrication, construction and commissioning stage. One can also do risk analysis during operational stage as just now we have been seeing various examples like Hazard etcetera. Having said this, let us see how do we go about further with Hazard evaluation and control. We all know that every type of hazard is associated with some risk, that is very clear. So, every type of hazard is associated with some risk, because every hazard happening in oil and gas industry has a financial implication, therefore, risk is very important and closely connected to hazard analysis, because this has a potential of financial loss that is where it becomes very important for us economic perspective. Okay. It also has a very serious consequences. Therefore, every type of hazard in offshore industry actually is associated with some type of risk. It is important therefore, to analyze the following. One, this seriousness or consequences, the economic perspective of the risk involved, the environmental damage cost by the degree of risk both in terms of operational in terms of strategic and economic perspective. Therefore, hazard evaluation has to be planned. Planning and subsequent implementation planning can be either made. either to mitigate or to control the risk involved.
the moment I say control or mitigate, the objective is to bring down the risk to any acceptable level. Please understand offshore business cannot have a zero risk process, it is not a zero risk process. Okay? We cannot bring down the risk to zero level, we can always try to or attempt to bring the risk to an acceptable level what we call as as low as reasonably practical. Therefore, hazard evaluation should lead to risk reduction to an alert level which can be done in any stage in a process plant. If you want to do a QRA during a design stage, let us say because hazard can be effectively done when you have got a plant or a process unit in operation because hazard is actually perceiving the hazards while the system is functional. But you want to actually evaluate the hazards in the design stage itself, then one can do what is called failure mode and effect analysis what we call FMEA. There are two kinds of FMEA you can do, one is what we call design FMEA, other is called process FMEA. You can also do failure mode effect analysis for a given process in place, you can also do it at the design stage, both FMEA can do. In the FMEA you can also add one more quality to a study by identifying the criticality in the design. So, we call that as failure mode effect and criticality analysis FM ECA. So, one can do FM ECA during operation. Subsequently, if the plant is in process or the process line or the production line is functional, then one can do hazard study. Initially, one will do hazard study to identify the hazards. One can also do quickly a checklist method or a what if analysis to check the hazards present in the system and subsequently one can do a detailed hazard study which can evaluate the consequences and probability of occurrence of undesired events. So, friends in hazard analysis whatever deviations you perceive in the design stage itself are all undesirable. So, hazard analysis or hazard evaluation in general gives a very good foresight about the perceived deviations from the original objective of the problem which can be a very useful tool for identifying the unnecessary expenditure involved in the whole design. We already saw in the previous lectures by doing an hazard analysis one can also evaluate any gold plated system. A gold plated system is that one where the probability and minimum consequence are noticed, but however it also indicates me that a gold plated system is dealt with unnecessary and expensive safety equipments. So, it has got unnecessary and safety and expensive safety equipments in place which can be also reduced the investment cost can be diverted to other necessary segments of the plant which requires more safety assessment or assurance. So, skeleton 1997 clearly highlights how a gold plated system can be slightly compromised to redirect the investment from this particular system design to the top the one which requires more safety assurance. So, hazard evaluation therefore, is a simple way of evaluating hazard and identifying the total consequences 
associated with the hazard and the likelihood of those consequences which will occur when the hazard is formed. So, hazard evaluation can be done interestingly by a matrix as you see in the screen now. The screen shows a matrix which explains how potentially they are severe, how likely they can occur. If they will happen, you have a scale of 5. If they are very unlikely, you have a scale of 1. If the potential severity is catastrophic, you have a scale of 5. If the potential severity is very minor or unnoticeable, you have a scale of 1. So, you form a matrix and you classify them in an alphabetic notation varying from A, B, C as you see from the matrix here. For example, any potential severity which is minor, but will definitely likely to happen may be classified as B. Any catastrophic severity which may be very unlikely is also classified as B. So, one can see here the band of the B which is undesirable. Of course, A are acceptable and C is also acceptable of course, with some correction measures. So, hazard evaluation can be easily done in a qualitative scale can be converted into an understanding like this in terms of its severity equivalence and the likelihood of occurrence which is also a form of risk analysis. So, uh, indirectly hazard can be also converted to risk analysis in terms of evaluation chart as uh, shown on the screen now. So, hazards can be also classified as class C, B and A as you see here. Class C refers to relatively lesser risk whereas class B refers to higher serious risks and class A, uh, A refers to intolerable risk as you see in the hazard evaluation chart. This implies that the work should be immediately stopped and the risk analysis should be carried out and the corrections measured measurements should be taken in the given system. So, if you look at the screen back again, you will easily see catastrophic damage which is certainly going to happen is classified as A and so on which is undesirable. So, hazard classification goes in a group of A, B, C, A is intolerable, unacceptable, B is posing serious risk which means immediate steps should be taken to control risk whereas, C is relatively lesser risk. The class into which the hazards fall is the basis for deciding how you prioritize the plans of hazard analysis. So, friends in this lecture we have understood how to do an hazard evaluation, we have understood what are the important steps we learn from accident analysis and we also said how hazard and risk can be interconnected and hazard evaluation is very important in oil business. Thank you very much.